Hello, my soccer universe. I'll give you a little slightly different perspective this time around. I also won't have the light in my face. I'm using the light from above. Yeah, normally I'm 90 degrees turned, so you see a few different scarves here behind me that you usually do not see. Uh, that leaf is a reminder that this room was originally meant to be the kids' room, but it's too small. And I've set myself up now here. I have to work from home. So it's kind of my office, but I soon will switch you over to the jerseys. Uh, Again, what do I want to talk about today? First of all, I'm wearing Cagliari. I decided now that the um, season is kind of on <laughs> suspended or not happening. I can wear kind of all the jerseys that I have not been wearing for the simple reason that, you know, no one is playing, no one has lost and, and so on. So let's get a few jerseys uh, out for my videos that didn't get a lot of love. And this jersey, when I put it on yesterday, my wife said, oh, this is a nice one. I agree, this is a very nice jersey and it's even nicer because I don't have a sponsor on it. But what am I going to talk about today? Um, I think I want to talk about the way forward. I mean, clearly, uh, European and worldwide soccer is more or less on a standstill. I will do tomorrow. And tomorrow, maybe the day after, I will do a review. We had games played in Russia and in Turkey. That is interesting. I also, we had a few games midweek. So let's wrap this up and then uh, look also forward. As I said, I promise I will do some jersey review videos. Uh, you will see videos of jerseys that I added to my collection. I think this is not a perfect time to do something like that. And yeah, maybe some other stuff coming up too. Um, but let's talk about the news and all this coronavirus and how we can move on from there. Um, the stories are not getting much better. I mean, we already knew that Real Madrid is under lockdown because the ba one basketball player had the virus. Now Valencia, I think, had four confirmed cases in Italy. I think there were 10 confirmed cases. We had Yorugani that I talked about. So yeah, it is a serious, serious situation. We all have to wait, wait it out. Uh, personally, I'm making the best out of it. I actually enjoy being at home, being around my family, uh, being able to do work, but also have this all kind of together. It works so far quite well. Let's see how we will deal with it in two weeks. I imagine it will, it will be a full month, if not more, where we just have to stay like that and make the best out of it. Uh, I think if you, and here's my, I say it now and I say it later, stay at home if you can. If you need, if you absolutely must work because you have a vital uh, profession, thank you very much for, for your work. But everyone else, stay at home. Stay at home. Don't be stupid. Uh, I have been hearing that too many people are running around and I saw it myself on Saturday. I needed to get something from work and I saw that too many people were out. Now they made it kind of stricter here. But yeah, let's talk about moving forward. Tomorrow, uh, when this post is, will be already today, Tuesday, is the big uh, meeting of all the UEFA associations. Um, and I think one of the biggest points will be what will we do with Euro 2020? The Italian FA is for postponing it. Um, I think almost everyone would agree it would be good to have this junk away because we don't have a final field. We will not have friendlies to play. We have not the leagues finished. It is a whole mess. I think moving Euro 2020 is a necessary first step. I'm not saying cancelling. I say moving. And we have two suggestions. The one that I originally thought might make the most sense is postpone it for a year. But we have some troubles there because um, a we have the Women's Euro that's also scheduled in England. So that's... Um, causes some, takes a little bit spotlight away from a sport that anyway needs spotlight. So that might not be nice. We have the FIFA Club World Cup. I already said, I don't care about it. And UEFA really does not care about that one. So that one is not a big loss. And then what do we with Nations League and World Cup qualifying, which is happening next year? That might be a slightly bigger step where um, I think an option would be to let go of the Nations League for once. I think it's the least painful uh, step. I know that UEFA surely wouldn't want to have that or you make the Nations League such a way that it really doubles up as World Cup qualifiers. Uh, you need to find a solution, something like that. And then maybe make playoffs across the board, say 
yeah, I mean, a third in spots. I mean, basically, whoever is in League A has a chance to qualify for a World Cup. Does not seem quite fair. Um, but yeah, I have to think about that. But I think uh, it can only work along these lines, to be honest. So yeah, that's what we have. Uh, that, I think, is the first step, step stepping stone. The second one is how do we finish the leagues? And I see basically four options. And I think they depend on how far Euro 2020 gets moved. Option one is don't declare any champion. Uh, don't declare a champion. Don't uh, uh, declare anyone getting relegated or promoted. Just uh, make a step, stand still. It's null and void. Um, I personally would hate this uh, one more worst uh, most because it is not fair. Um, uh, from a positive side, I mean, mostly if I look at Liverpool, uh, they are practically champion. Not giving Liverpool the title would be a travesty. So uh, from that point of view, I really do not like uh, this option. I'm also thinking uh, for uh, promoted teams, like if you look at Benevento who in Italy who have this run and they really would deserve to go up uh, and should be rewarded for that. So I think it's not the most sporting solution. I know ice hockey took that, but you know you have to see that the ice hockey leagues, most of them don't have promotion and relegation. And they have a playoff system and um, you have most of them. I mean, I, I know the Austrian and German leagues, they were already in playoff mode where you actually have final standings after which you can assign European spots, which we don't have have in soccer. Uh, that option also would, also would be the one that the clubs would probably have. It's the worst thing because it will hit them financially. Uh, where I could potentially get on board with it is, say, Europa League and Champions League. I know it generates a lot of money, uh, but I don't think we need necessarily to find a winner there. I know it's not that many games that need to still be played, but I think it's not 100%. I think I could get them boarded. Even more so, I would cancel all remaining cup competitions, even if there's just a final two to be played. Just uh, cup competitions, for, forget about it. I'm looking especially at the FA Cup. I know most others have already final or semi-final, but the FA Cup, I think, is now uh, approaching the quarterfinal stage or something like that. It just gets too much. So I actually, that cup competitions of it. I think the most important is to get the national championships finished one way or another. Now to get them finished uh, leads lead to option two and I think uh, what I read today this is what UEFA is going to suggest um, and what this would buy to UEFA is to save Euro 2020 as is if it can be played uh, and don't cause too much trouble. Take the current standings as the final standings the question is, do you assign a champion, do you assign a promotion or relegation? Uh, but use the current standings to assign European spots for the next year. Not too happy about it. Um, I think there are a few leagues that can uh, then properly crown a champion. One would be Austria, where we have everyone played everyone home and away. And you also would have, uh, I think, Greece, where everyone played everyone home, home and away. So you would have final standings and you could assign a champion. I think that would be fair uh, in a way, but for all the other leagues, I, I, I don't see it in any way as fair. Uh, if I look at, uh, at the Juve Lazio, the Bundesliga title race, doesn't seem all that fair. Or So that I think is, I understand why UEFA is, because this will save Euro 2020 if it can be played. But I think at this moment, I would even uh, say that we have trouble finding the final qualifi qualifiers. We have to have those playoffs. Then we have to have the tournament. And let's quickly talk, I mean, uh, besides moving them either to the winter or to um, the spring next year, uh, are two options and keep the structure as it is. Or you find a host country. Turkey and Russia have been served up. I think Russia would be very happy to host, although uh, who tells it that Russia is not in trouble as well. I, At this moment, I see with everything that's going, going on, hosting this tour tournament would just send the wrong message as the preferred spot. So that means basically now we have two more options. Finish the leagues. Um, 
And now again, it depends on how much time do you get. Uh, let's say that, and I think Italy, and we will talk about CR Serie in a little bit, and I plan to do this similar things for the other five uh, big leagues, other four big leagues, five top five. Uh, so Serie A things that um, we can play starting May. Let's say we get Euro 2020 out of the way. Uh, then I think you've May and June, you have two months to complete the championship. And I think in two months, I, you know, we're missing on March, April, May, so three months. If you get until July, maybe you can finish a champ championship and then start all anew, but I think it gets too cramped and the players still will, I mean, they get a break now, which is probably necessary, but I think um, it might get too cramped. I think the best would be make two months and make a sort of a playoff system. And I'm not saying playoffs like in America with best of, with, uh, you know, where you have a playoff three. No, uh, do it like we do it, for instance, in Austria, although I hate the system. And we'll talk about it in a second that you split the league in mini leagues and those play against each other. And there's no, of course, no question how do you do that? I suggest something later. Of course, you can play it all, finish it all, which would be the clean solution. I think all of these, if you're 2020 is away, there needs to be a way to finish the leagues. I am convinced that actually we should do mini leagues. Uh, a, because of the drama and that it will gen generate, and B, it will allow us to save kind of the 2021 season. We don't have to readjust a lot, ex except that we have to accommodate for the Euros. Uh, so if we can manage that, then the question is, where do we move the euros? Uh, well, um, it has been suggested if you finish out the entire leagues, uh, if there's really much time to do, we need it, really have it in winter uh, and make everything from, make it a 1920 up until, let's say, October, then play the euros or have the euros the same time as the AFCON. Um, then make a championship for the calendar year of 2021 uh, and one for 2022 and then you have a World Cup and then you the calendars are kind of lining up. Um, sounds nice in theory, I'm not sure if it really would, would work out. I think we should really try to sell, so keep the 2021 season as normal as possible. So assuming we can start in May, let's look how I would put such a playoff in Serie A. And I'm saying Serie A because I expect Serie A to be the first league that actually will get going again because they are the first ones that got into that mess. They probably will be the first ones to get out of this mess. And uh, Serie A is also the league that will have probably the most discussions because the club almost decide everything and they don't get on a single page. So which, which is a whole different story. Um, Let's do it the following. Uh, I suggest two splits uh, that are possible. We have a um, 20 team table and at the moment the table looks as follows. We have Juve one point ahead of Lazio, uh, both 26 points played, but then we have a host of teams like Inter and Atalanta have only 25 points played. We need to find European spots. We need to find uh, promoter spots. And of course we need to find a champion. If we take only very very little time, I would suggest we split it in leagues of five. So we have four leagues. And now the question is, do you take the current standings or do you take the standings from the fall and then uh, everyone plays everyone only once? When I look, if I kept here the current standings all the way, the way to the left, I mean, Torino was way higher up than they are now, Cagliari also, so it doesn't seem to be quite fair. So I think you would need to take the current standings. And then you split it up into those five leagues and what I would do now is not take the points that they have here or make something like give bonus points or anything like that. I honestly would do it as follows. Take only the games that have been played among those five teams and then play it out. The advantage is you don't lose any of the results. You don't make any um, weird thing. Um, and you just need to finish, I think, three or four rounds and you have a champion or uh, you've decided re relegation. The disadvantage is if we do that here now, is so I've split it up into those uh, four leagues, A, B, C, D. And already, if I would only count the games between like Juve, Lazio, Atalanta, Inter and Roma. 
the disadvantage is uh, twofold. First of all, it's not even, and especially if you look at Le look at League B, Napoli and Parma still have to play. Uh, the game against each other to be kind of even. We see in League C, there's many teams with five and only four. So, you know, it's kind of uneven everything there. So uh, you need to adjust for, for, for that. So certain teams have to play sooner than others. For instance, Lazio, has, Lazio Inter and Roma have already six games. So uh, that, I think, is a clear disadvantage of that system. But I actually would prefer that one as a sprint uh, solution. Um, of course, Juve here has a big advantage uh, with three points. But yeah, so, so be it. Also, Milan uh, seems to have a good run, but have, have in mind, yeah, Napoli could go in there. So um, that's one way of doing it. I actually would even spin it a little bit further uh, to decide the European and the Champions League spots. Because, you know, a team like Milan or Napoli said, you know, we will really want to challenge for the Champions League. I mean, I know the chances are slim, but uh, let's give that. I actually would say that uh, the first three of the mini league A, they are fixing the Champions League and decide the champions. Then I would make the bottom two and the first two of B play um, one legged playoff, something like that, for this final Champions League spot. Because uh, as far as I know, everyone, um, the first two, the last place team of A and the next two would be in the Europa League. That, I think, would work well. Um, similar for relegation. I mean, the 14 to uh, the, uh, the Mini League C uh, part here, I think, would be have nothing much to play for. However, I would add that the loser of that one has to play the um, third place team in League D to decide for promotion or relegation. I think that would add a little bit more excitement to it to have a bit more in there. So this would be a short uh, version of it. Mini leagues, you keep the results and you just finish playing amongst each other uh, and uh, the leagues are decided based on the current standings. I know it's not entirely 100% fair, but at least a little bit of that. Uh, it seems fair, fairer overall than most others. Now you can also do two leagues of 10 each. I think that would be the other option, but then you have a lot more games to be played in this case. Um, in this case, uh, 10, 9 is 18 games, so you would have um, five, uh, eight, you have to have eight weeks space, basically. You, you can play mid weeks, but eight match days, and you see Atalanta here, and Napoli would have only 10 games, so they have to uh, play catch up. It doesn't look uh, as bad in the bottom part of that one. So, uh, but yeah, this is maybe a fairer way if you have a little bit more time. It also can be played within two months. And then you have actually everyone kind of in there as well. And you keep uh, relegation and you keep the battle for your, your European spots in two separate leagues and of course even the ones in the uh, bottom one I would even give the winner a chance for the last Europa League spot just to make it a little bit more exciting. I'm planning to do this for um, Premier League and so on as well just because out of interest but I think this would in my case I feel is the fairest thing because you count current results that happened you don't need to um, finish the season and you don't come need, need, need to come with a weird point system. Let me know what you think should happen uh, of those options. I'm curious and I will, as I said, I'm gonna do in the next few days and I also wanna see what now the decision is about Euro 2020, if there's any decision being reached. And then we can talk for uh, Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga and Liga, uh, how things might go. And I hear from you how you are what you like about my idea. If you like my idea, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!